Hello, welcome back. This is My Mate Bought a Toaster, the show where I dive into people's Amazon purchase histories in order to tell their life stories. My guest today is the uh, comedian, broadcaster, podcaster, parent, excellent glasses wearer, Josh Widdicombe. Hello, Josh Widdicombe. I've just realised, genuinely, as you said that, because we're filming this in town, I meant to bring in... I bought a phone case. I needed to take it back to John Lewis. Oh, this happened last time we spoke. You were trying to get to the Apple Store. You said, where's your studio? Is it near the Apple Store? Because you're trying to double up. I, because I live in, well, I don't, I, mean, I live in zone two. I don't know what my problem is. I, if I go into town, unlike you, you know, mm. you're part of the rat race, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going in every day. Yeah, I'm a commuter person. Yeah, yeah you're a commuter yeah. person. Whereas I, when I go in town, I'm like, I've got to do everything. Mm, mm. But this is a great example of online purchasing problems. I bought it online from John Lewis. It was the wrong sized. What was it? It was a case for my new phone. Oh, I see. Oh, and, and I got the, it for uh, the big one. Why did you get a a, fo- a phone case? Is prime Amazon to misquote their brand, but that, that's that's what Amazon was born to give you plastic. For that yes, thing. but I and you'll find this uh, throughout. I try to not use Amazon when I can avoid it. Excellent. Yes. So for for moral reasons. For obviously. moral reasons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and so. All of my books I buy, I buy a lot of books, yeah. uh, I buy through hive.co.uk. The heating control. Yes, the heating really control. Nice. So th- their range is very poor. <laughs> uh, no, uh, through hive.co.uk, which is, uh, I googled the words ethical online book. Oh, and that's that's what they came up with. So they use local bookshops, right, to get you your you books? Can, you can, uh, they do that, and then you can choose a local bookshop that some of your money goes to. So um, I do that. But I do, do buy do books that? through Amazon because heart, cause sometimes yeah. you can't get them, so then I just go, oh, fuck it. Right. So, I'll have so, this at 10 p.m. tonight then. So when, yeah, if I must ha- have it cheaper and massively more conveniently, yeah. I guess I will. Th- I mean, that's admirable, by the way. And this show is in no way affiliated with Amazon. No, in no, fact, no. a lot. I of- don't think you need to worry because I don't think it's like they were struggling, but then Tom Price started a podcast <laughs> and turned things around. Imagine if this took them down. But I would say that a theme we've seen in the last, when you go through people's purchase history, is people using it less and less and try- making a real conscious effort to use it less. Well, it's, I I use it for things where it's like, fuck me, it'd mm. be difficult. But by difficult, really, yeah. I mean, fuck me, I'll have to put my address in if I go through that. Yeah. You know. My, my this website doesn't know my credit card and my credit card's upstairs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to so, use Amazon. Let's not let's not pretend that I'm no, anything other than lazy as fuck. But I do like the idea of you going to pick up your books from the local bookstore. A little bit like those celebrities, you know, in the comic relief days, just sort of arriving like some sort of saviour. You know what I mean? <laughs> just chopping. White saviour complex. A bit of a white saviour complex, but with buying yourself, you know, yeah. the uh, the latest Ian McEwen. <laughs> Josh Rudicom, I'll tell you. Yeah. That guy's so good. It's lovely. Um so look, Josh, uh, we're going to tell your life story via your Amazon purchase yeah, yeah, history, right. okay? Um, 07 is when you made your first order. Is it? 2007. You're so good at this website. Mate, I'm so, I've am got so much practice, but yeah. also I'm so thrilled because the first thing is just going to be... Is 07 good or bad? Oh, I'd say that's... How old are you? For, um, the, the, 41. Yeah, I would say that is... Is that about that when part. people do it? Yeah, people tend to get an, an Amazon... Sounds like my mum saying that. My mum said, yeah. I've got a Facebook. People tend to get an Amazon account around sort of late 20s. Right, yeah. So I think that makes sense. And um, the first thing you bought is just so beautiful. What is it? Jonathan Creek, Series 1 to 4. Oh. <laughs> yes, please. We've hit the ground running. <laughs> I'd say one of the great TV shows. Yeah. Uh, it's just incredible. Yeah. Um, I... Yeah, I loved it. And that's the original one as well, obviously series one to four, because it's had quite a lot of, in a sort of Red Dwarf style, you know, the kind of reboots and the reunions. Yeah, yeah, but they've never... Could you imagine that with Last Leg? Imagine when it the Last Leg finally I, falls I apart. I think, yeah, well, that's happened, but okay. uh, when it finally stops. Oh, I see, right. <laughs> I thought we got a real massive oh, no, exclusive then. But imagine if it ever stopped. As they say in the 138th episode of The Simpsons, <laughs> you know they've got the 138th episode spectacular, and Troy McClure says... 
Who knows what adventures they'll have between now and when they become unprofitable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I feel like that's the same for every TV show, really. Every reunion, band or TV, there is an unwillingness born out of financial necessity. I do think when the last leg ends, I'll be able to go. At least in 10 years, there'll be a slight payday for the one-off returning series that's a disaster. <laughs> Exactly. You'll know that's in the bank ready to go. Yeah, that's in the bank ready to go. It's nice to have that. It's nice to have that. Um, so, yeah, so Alan Davis, he's still done it, but there's been various reboots with other people. But, okay, so imagine someone listening or watching has never watched a Jonathan Creek. You're the luckiest person on earth. Because you've got, got it all to come. You've got it all to come. So he uh, he's a magician. His job is it's comedy drama. Love that. But it's uh, it's incredibly well plotted mysteries kind of locked room mysteries like Sherlock mm. Holmes style locked room mysteries like Death in Paradise yep, yep. Um, I think that would be an unfair comparison they do well I'm not comparing any merit I'm just comparing the oh, structure right. of Death in Paradise oh right yeah 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 which is it's always a locked yeah. room in the Caribbean yeah yeah I suppose <laughs> in the same way that the Beatles are the same <laughs> as Busted <laughs> M- musical instruments yeah and songs yeah exactly, exactly. yeah 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 um <laughs> Lot of lock moon mysteries, lot of um, codes, lot of Love kind that. of you know unsolvable, unsolvable crime to the law. Although the law tend not to get involved, mm. um, having to bring in this guy who's a magician's assistant, yeah. uh, and he solves the crimes. And also on top of that, his psychic Caroline Quentin plays a kind of uh, really great kind of feisty crime writer like journalist true yeah. crime journalist yeah. she'd be absolutely cleaning up now when it's a prime true crime yeah. season um and uh they've got an on off kind of will they won't they love that x files esque x files esque it's just brilliant you do comedy have to wonder drama. what low ebb the police were in this admittedly fictional tale yeah. where you know they're going for the magician's assistant so a real life version would be debbie mcgee helping with <laughs> yes well she is in the magic circle well no he's not no no it's not he's not a magician's assistant oh right okay. he's a magician himself then no 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 he designs the tricks for the magician oh i see so he's socially awkward he's kind of yes. wears a duffel coat he lives in a windmill mm. he's kind of and it so he doesn't want to be in the spotlight okay. so he he's the genius behind the magician do you think people relate to that as well the man hiding away i think i, I think, think that's incredibly we love that yeah I think it's a brilliant show. I actually think it's um, it's been a bit lost in time, mm. and it's incredible. Some shows can age badly in terms of their reputation. I'm obsessed with the lower low. People go about a lower low like, and it, watch it. Forgive it certain things. It's still a genius show, right? It, it's of all the sitcoms, I don't know any sitcom with a larger core cast. I know. There's How a lad, 20 characters. Okay, we're now on an Alo Alo tangent. We will be back at My <laughs> Mabel Autosa soon. It's so good. It, it, at the budget, imagine a day filming Alo Alo and they're like, well, who's in today? Everyone. 30. <laughs> yeah, it's like EastEnders. How many are eating today? 30. <laughs> Plus extras. Completely. Completely. Yeah. Um, no, I love Jonathan Creek. And I love Alan Davis. And um, I love a mystery where. Because I never solve the mysteries. Do you solve the mysteries? No, I don't think you can. Okay, but if there's a show where, like, or an escape room where people might be able to work it out, I'm the guy going, "Oh right, yeah, okay." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I haven't got a chance. Yes. Um, like there's a, you know, it will be there was dew on the person on the bottom of their trousers. Okay. So there's a really good one where a woman, and it's always. The subsidiary characters are always really well plotted. They've got kind of quirks. It's it's incredibly it's it's what you describe as quintessentially English. Yes, lovely. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, a woman gets uh, blown up. Wonderful, heartwarming, Heart- really cozy, <laughs> really cozy. <laughs> um, and then there's an old woman who's being uh, um. It's so it's so complex, but let me That's talk fine. about it. Yeah. an old woman who's uh, in recuperation for an operation, and she's living with her friend who's a younger bloke who's looking after her, right? Okay. Yeah. And she's sitting in her garden in the evening having 
evening tea and the woman who has just been blown up in the morning walks past her. But this old woman didn't know about the blowing up yeah. and so she's seen this woman after death. Love that. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And, and they're like, oh, did the woman get blown up and because her, it's a different body or something like that, you know, all these kind do of things. Do we theories. trust the old woman's words? Yeah, yeah. Do we trust yeah. the old woman's words? Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the woman said, yeah, she had like uh, wet around the bottom of her trousers when she was walking around. Anyway, it turns out the guy that's looking after the older woman mm. is using her as an alibi, right? And what he's done in her, he works in TV lighting. Okay. You've got all these details. Yes. Um, and he's uh, blacked out her, the window of her bedroom and he's slowly changed the time of day over time. Wow. Until she's living on the t wrong 12 hours. Yeah. So she's living oh. what you call Australian time. And then he's she's in the garden providing him an alibi. Yeah. That is she, so clever. Yeah. She thinks it's nine in the morning or what yeah. she thinks it's eight in the morning, but it's eight in the evening. Right. I mean. Or the other way around. And, it's weaponized daylight. Yeah, exactly. Genius. And then. So that's how Alan Davis, sorry, Jonathan Craig, yeah. work, he works that out. So it's really detailed mysteries. I've really gabbled that, but it's fucking no, brilliant. But it's a really great illustration of um, the mind behind the show and the way they think. David Rennick, who writes it, is a brilliant writer. He wrote own, um, he wrote One Foot in the Grave, which yes. is also Another incredibly one feels... well plotted. Yes. And it doesn't get the respect it deserves. It's so well plotted. It would always come around really low. Everything would come together and there'd be yeah. really weird, dark, intricate plots. Yeah. And David Rennick also wrote, when he was just a TV, not just, but he was a, before he had his own things, he wrote for the two Ronnies. Mm. And he wrote the sketch, uh, the mastermind sketch, where... Oh, you answered the question from yeah, before. So that's, that's him. total genius. I didn't know yeah. that was David Rennick. Yeah. Wow, all right, Wikipedia. So he's got a Good really, knowledge. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in the Yeah, world. yeah, yeah. I think... Um, you didn't think that would turn up as many here? Uh... I really didn't. I like... Also, it reminded me, listening to you describe the plot, reminded me of a thing that we don't have anymore, which I miss, which is... The pub bore. Sitting... <laughs> <laughs> sitting with people you don't really have to listen to. <laughs> no. It reminded me of a thing, which is... Sitting in school. Yeah. Right, it's a school-specific thing. And in tremendous detail, going through the plot of a TV show that you watched the night before. Yeah. I feel like, because of modern, the way we consume TV shows and films, we don't do that. But it reminded me of going through an X-Files episode about a gorilla who could talk. And only in the act of describing it did I realise how absolutely batshit it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And, and it's that, it's not quite water cooler, but it's the school the next day. Right, no, no, no. And then, and then Scully, right, she comes back. But do, do you know what I mean? But do you know what? That's an incredible skill of a writer mm. to... Be able to take you on that journey and you buy it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we, we are so snowed under with all the streaming stuff now that you just go, oh, you should watch Baby Reindeer. It's just really interesting. And oh, it's really, oh, God. You know what I mean? It's always yeah. a very vague overview <laughs> to actually go. And then this happens. And <laughs> yeah, then this yeah. happens. And then this happens. And then this happens. Yeah. <laughs> More spoilers, please. All right. So, so I signed up to Amazon to buy the DVD box yeah. set of Jonathan Green. And that's the only thing you ever bought on Amazon. So thanks for coming on the show. Um, <laughs> This has been great, Josh. Do when you meet Alan Davis now, I assume you've done QI and all those sorts of yeah. things. Are you? Is part of your life, Jonathan Crew? Um, so, uh, the show I do on Sky with Rob Beckett, yes. uh, Rob Beckett Smart TV. Yeah, we had Alan Davis on. Yeah, and we had Joe Thomas on as well. Oh yeah, and it transpired that Joe Thomas is a bigger Jonathan Creek fan than I am. Wow. Okay. Did he dive into plots like you? And yeah, and so we had a mastermind. Uh, <sighs> Alan Davis set the questions. Oh my god! For us on Jonathan Creek, and he brought the actual duffel coat in, and we got to wear it. You wore Jonathan Creek's duffel coat. I've, I've got a photo of me in Jonathan Creek's duffel coat. That's like wearing Doctor Who's long coat or bow tie or whatever. That's, yeah, that's iconic. Yeah, so I loved that. So, um, yeah, he, he's fully aware of how much I loved it. In 2007, by the way, just for a bit of life story, because that is ostensibly what we're trying to do. Yeah. Um, where were you comedy-wise? You, had you landed in London? Were things up and running? I was you, moving right? into London. I'd moving in. I lived in London, mm. 2007, but my first gig was January 2008. Is there a date on that? Yeah, that was um, uh, 2007. It was the 17th of December. Oh, it was probably a Christmas present. 
it's a great gift. It was a, 30 it must quid. Have been, yeah. That's got to be A-list family, 30 quid. Yeah, that must have been a Christmas present. Because... Yeah. Uh, or did I... Or was it one of those... Oh, I'll have that for myself. I mean... Um, anyway, um, so December 2007 was three weeks before my first gig. Yeah. Isn't that mad? Yeah. Um, there you are. And it was actually two weeks after my first gig that I should have done, which was I was booked in for a gig on a Friday night above the Camden Head um, in uh, Camden Passage in Islington. In Islington, yeah. yeah, yeah. Kind of nondescript pub, but they have gigs above it. They had stand up there every night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the Laughing Cavaliers, there was a, improv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and they, uh, what do I happen to them? Um, I was on that night, mm. a Friday in like early December. Yeah. My set was, looking back, a string of awful jokes. But of course it is. Of course. Um, and uh, turned up, gave my name in, went and sat in the crowd. Yeah. Crowd, 10 to 15 people. Other comics. Yeah, other comics. Sat there the whole night. The compare, I won't name him because this feels a bit mean mm -hmm. but he did really badly yeah and he got really angry with the audience to the point where he started hitting the mic on his forehead oh, in the wow. center of his forehead oh wow um and then just like bang bang not part of the act just oh god and then what he couldn't see, but everyone else could see. There was blood dripping no. down his head, like, oh my God. like Andrew W. K. <laughs> and um, he, <laughs> and then he was like, horrific. Yeah, and then he was like, anyway, your final act of the night. And I'm like, fucking hell, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> and then he was like, um, announced a different act on. Oh, and I was like, and they'd forgotten to put me on. Oh my life. And I was like, went to the back and I was like, you've forgotten. What? So you had to go and have a conversation with a man who has blood dripping yeah, down yeah, his yeah. face. You've forgotten to put me on. And he was like, oh, sorry, mate. You, you weren't sat at the back with the other actors. And I was like, well, I didn't know. I'm new. I wasn't. I... And, and he was it? like, what well, do you want to go on? I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? <laughs> yeah. So your first ever gig in London, you didn't do. I was living in London. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. it was your first, like, living yeah, in London. Yeah, but look at the situation. Everyone had died. He'd I mean, drawn blood. <laughs> I was like, do you know what? Tonight's not the night. It just feels like a quite Widdicombe-esque thing to do. Do you know what I mean? To arrive at a situation and go, no, this nah, is just not yeah, for me. It's all right. And I think if I had wow. maybe had a bad gig as my first gig, I'd have never have done it again. I don't think... I've what got... were you doing before then? I was, uh, I was a sub-editor... Oh. And occasional writer at the on the Guardian Sport website. Oh wow! Okay. So I'd write like minute by minutes and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Funny, the funny minute by minutes was that when that era was coming where people write like yeah. The Fordyce, I'd, Tom say, Fordyce. I'd say Rye. Yeah, so lovely. not Tom Fordyce. He was the BBC, but mm. similar shtick. So mm. like Barry Glenn Denning and people like that. And yeah. um, yeah. So I'd write like not the big ones. Yeah. But I did. Uh, I did like transfer deadline day and stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it's quite a, that is quite a shock to the system if you come from the offices of the Guardian to the Laughing Horse room above a pub with a yeah. bleeding man. Yeah, yeah that exactly. does feel like a reasonable yeah, 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 reaction exactly. to not do. Yeah. Um, let's move into two thousand and eight, okay? And we can see stand up everywhere here, right? We've got Logan Murray teach yourself stand up comedy. So that fucking hell, that's a bit on the nose, isn't it? If you're really trying to is. tell your One, life story through Amazon. So I did the Amuse Moose stand up course. Yep. Yeah. With which is run by Logan Murray. Yeah, wonderful man. Yeah, wonderful man. You were in quite a good batch. There were a load of good people in that year, weren't you? Weren't you with Were you with Greg Davis in those? No, they, he was way before me. He was way before. Okay, fine. He Take was it in, in it with Rod Gilbert. So who was in your year who's since sort of blossoms? No one. Oh. Uh, the, I don't think there was anyone in my class that went on. Tony okay. Cowards was a stand-up comedian. He was great, Tony Cowards. Yeah. yeah. So he was in my class. Yeah. Um, but you know, all you had to do to get on it, it wasn't like a. It was pay 375 quid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, still yeah. remember that fee. Uh, <laughs> which was a lot of money. I mean... To pay. But I... Well, so, do you consider how much you now earn from the art of comedy? And you It's a good investment. But oh, I so. genuinely thought... It was partly to make myself do it. Yes. 
And you so do I, need to bully yourself. Yeah. This and I was like, if I do this, I'll mm. have to do it. But yeah. if I'm honest, I also presumed they'd tell me how to be a stand-up comedian so I could just be a stand-up comedian. I'd make my money back quite quickly. Mm, which mm. obviously isn't the case. No. And then you turn up and it's a lot of improv games. It's a lot of getting comfortable on stage. And of course that, in hindsight, is exactly the right thing to do and it's all you can do for people. You can't go, this is how you do, write a joke. No. This is how you hold a microphone. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So um, it was the right thing to do. But obviously at the time you're like, oh God, I thought I was going to learn yeah. how to be Stuart Lee and in 12 <laughs> weeks I'd be Stuart Lee. Well, you have bought the Stuart Lee DVD at the same time. Have I? So you were obviously researching that. Stuart Lee stand-up comedian. Well, like, I was Harry Hill Live, very similar comedians. I was basically doing... An impression of Stuart Lee for the first 18 months I was a stand-up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember me? No, I don't remember seeing you gig. And I remember you appearing when you'd signed with Curb. No, no. Were... So I gigged with you before that, and I make no... I don't mean this as a, like... So why well, didn't you remember me, man? No. Um, And you were... It was when you were doing Torchwood. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so... Where was it? It was, like, um, Christian Knowles gigs. Oh, yeah, okay. So... Yeah. For those a bit inside baseball, that in it. So let's yeah, say yeah, yeah. Christian Knowles is a promoter. He's yeah. also an agent. He represents Mickey Flanagan. He does. Um, but he's a promoter, and he had a series of gigs, mm. which were like the first time you do paid gigs for twenty minutes. Yes. And yes. I got them, and I was incredibly out of my depth. I had ten, yeah. maybe twelve, and I had to string this out, and I wasn't good enough anyway. My twelve wasn't good enough, so I was kind of over-promoted early through people advising Christian Knowles to book me. Mm. It was mm. no one's fault except my own. But that problem of being sent out there when you haven't got quite enough Yeah, kit. and you try and hope something would happen oh. with the audience. You well, talk you just to the do audience. your material slowly. Yeah, what I do is I go out there, I think if I could just talk to them for three minutes up the top, that's in the bag. I've got three minutes. <laughs> um, Literally talking to them. Literally yeah, talking to them. Nothing funny. Yeah, yeah. Nothing and then I'd go into my, I'll save the best stuff, and then what mm. would go on? I'd go on. A minute in, I think, the talking to them's not working. They're losing faith. <laughs> oh, fuck, I've gone into my best routine at the top because of my lack of... So then I find myself seven minutes in and I've done all my material to nothing and I've yeah. got nothing for 13 minutes. Yeah, and every night was like Olympic levels of preparation, right? It was like, it, this is your Tokyo yeah. 2020 and you've you've been training for this and instead of doing the routine, you've started weightlifting. Yeah, you know, exactly. You've, done, yeah, you've yeah, made yeah, a bad yeah, yeah, and you, such, yeah. And you just have to keep... Oh, God. Awful. 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 Thing. So where did we gig together? Do you remember then? No. Was I nice? was... was I comparing? Oh, I don't really remember. Fine, I just remember. Fine. Um, it was at generic student union. Oh yeah, those guys. I remember. I yeah, remember yeah. the ones. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like a student yeah. union on a Thursday night, mm. and it was like I think you were comparing. Yeah, that makes sense. That's and how I, I mostly would, got I gigs. would have been in the middle. Okay. Could you ever have foreseen? Then, and this sounds like a wanky question, but like you've done you pretty well. You going through my Amazon? Yeah, yeah. Could you have us being on a sofa? You coming on my show on magic? No. Could you ever have foreseen at that stage? No the stuff has happened. No. Did you? At what point did you go? Game on, lads. This actually could be my career. Oh, I think you do that after. I did that after the first gig. Okay. Just Not, thought, I'm just going to do live stand, live stand up. Do some nice gigs. Be on the circuit. No, I didn't think anything. I Ellis James, who's my a good friend of mine, who's a comedian, says. After his first gig, he just presumed, because I had a good, not good in the way that you or I would now judge a good gig. Yeah. And I don't yeah. mean that in an arrogant no, way. No, no, I know what you mean. But yeah, a yeah. good gig in the sense that some people laughed at some things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't believe it happened. And It's very hard, it's very hard to disguise the shock. When yeah. I do a new bit and people laugh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> um, and so some people laughed at some things. And then uh, Ellis said this, so I'm kind of paraphrasing him, but it's how I felt. Mm. I was just like, well, I'm going to be a comedian. <laughs> oh, right. So this is, I'll just be a comedian now. And Ellis says, uh, yeah, I mean, there's only about 25, 30 comedians, isn't there? There's like Badil, <laughs> Skinner, <laughs> Harry Hill. Oh my God, you have no idea. Yeah, and you've got no idea. And, you your first Edinburgh and, then and, there's, like... and then there's like the six people that were on the gig oh, that God. I just did. And then there's presumably, what, 10 people in between? Mm. Is that youth? Is that naivety? What is that? Well, I think that's reality that no one, 
is that you don't realise how big an industry is until you're part of it. Until yeah. And had why... you known at that stage, you would have gone, oh. And then fuck. you're just fucking trawling around yeah, for, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. fucking years. Mm. But if I hadn't had that first gig... So from that first gig, you're like, well, I want to do this because my life at the moment is pretty rudderless. Mm. I don't want to do what I'm doing. Yeah. I, from the age of... 18, I knew I wanted to be a writer of some sort and I was yeah. obsessed with comedy. Right. And I I probably, if you'd said, what do you imagine your dream job being? Like writing sitcoms, like being a kind of, I was going to say Graham Linehan, but I don't think yeah. now, obviously, you'd say that. But like, a you know. sitcom machine. Yeah, but then I kind of got into stand-up because I heard that that opened doors in comedy writing. But you I weren't naturally a performer then? No, I wasn't at all. I used to go red if I did, um, you know, in like a university, you do like seminars where you'd have to share something. Yeah. I'd go red and my voice would go wobbly. Yeah. Oh my God, you were the red guy. I was the red guy. You were guy. the red guy at Winchester <laughs> Drama School. <laughs> did you, so that's because you don't come up, you are not a walking in the room, loud, shouty, extrovert type person. Obviously, you are very no. happy in these situations, but you're not a... Oh, I wouldn't go that far. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, specifically this situation, obviously awful. But, so so that moment where you had to start performing, how did you improve that just by doing it again and again? Yeah, I think it was necessity rather than want. That shows a real hunger, though, if you're like... Go yeah, there. I'm quite uh, single-minded and driven. Yeah, okay. Not quite. I am really single-minded and driven when I want to do something. Uh, interesting. So we've got the laid-back Whittacom vibes, but actually, that's a... I If I go for something, yeah, I kind of go for it, I suppose. Like you wanted oat milk in that tea before we started. And I, yeah, oh, and I, I, had ki- to go... and I killed that barista to get it. And it happened. And it happened. And you wiped the blood off, and now here we are. Exactly. That's good. Okay, good. We're learning about Whittacom. Yeah. Um, all right, look, let's power on through, Josh. Okay, let's see okay. what else we've got waiting for us as we go into 2009 now. And um, not many orders, bits and bobs. I'll just shout some things out. Obviously, you've bought the original soundtrack to Dirty Dancing. That's not me. When's that? What what year? December oh nine. Do you know what? Could be Christmas presents. This oh, could all yeah, be a that's, bunch that's of Christmas, Christmas presents. Present. Um, you have bought a sixteenth of December two thousand nine a medical carry case. Is that a real medical carry case? Let's find out, shall we? Let's click through and see what's going on here. It's very much toys. It's yeah, for kids. So that, is yeah, this yeah. for family? That's, that's family gift, okay. isn't it? And what are the family making, by the way, of, of Josh, who's gone up London and now he's a comedian at this stage? Are they kind of... Mm. They, have you got a shrug family or have you got a... Okay, but do fall back on... No, I haven't got do fall back on. Oh, okay. I've got do what you want. A shrug, Oh, I like a shrugger. Yeah, My yeah. family are quite shruggy. Yeah, How and I'd say alive? that's kind of the best gift you could give your children is to <sighs> let them do what they want. Yes, it really is. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best way to just... Just go for it, yeah. Because... Yeah. So you you haven't had any sort of like, oh, okay. but No, I think, no. Would you do the same with your kids when they... Yeah, totally. Yeah, just get Awful if they went into comedy, though, wouldn't it? Um, I would be... De- my kids have shown every now and again a little interest in it. And I'm just like, don't you do it. <laughs> I have shown you nothing but attention and love since you were born. Precisely <laughs> so you don't become <laughs> comedians. <laughs> um, look, 2010 now, Josh Whittacombe, and you've bought Jonathan Creek Complete Series 1 to 4. Again? So, yeah, you've gone again. Um, what? I don't know what's going on there. Plus the Christmas specials box set. Maybe it's because they tagged on the Christmas specials box set. No, I think the first one was a gift. Okay, this one's for you. Universal Truths and Cycles, Guided by Voices. That's a band. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, you you are into your, if I say into your music. Are you a yeah. muso, Uh, I, I That implies a boring element of your personality. It was a bit of an insult question, yeah, sorry. Yeah. But yes, um, are you really into it? I think the way to describe what I listen to, yeah. and I mean no disrespect, mm. is I listen to six music and that yeah. and everything that entails. But you don't have a beard. I don't have, I can't grow a beard. That's why, I see. But um, I listen to magic from mid-November yes, till do. December the 25th. My text messages from you go absolutely... <laughs> I will be, we'll probably be two or three days into 100% Christmas on Magic. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be like, oh, Whitaker's on. I won't hear from him again. <laughs> December the 26th. That's but, it. So I've got a friend who works on Lauren Levone. Shout out to Mark Higgins. Yeah, great. Uh, and he gets 
an incredible amount of texts throughout the mornings. I see. For 11 months of the year. I see. So I give Mark a month off. Basically. I don't know whether he he realises, whether he just thinks I've gone quiet. That's He gets a sort of Josh Widdicombe sabbatical yeah, for a few yeah. weeks. That's nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day... Do you, we... I've got... So, I mean... I'm going to save it because you're going to come on Parenting Hell and yes. I've got an incredible amount of questions about the Christmas playlist. Well, Kat Shub and I, we do our show together yeah. and we are, she's very keen as well, really keen to come on the show. And and we haven't really told our bosses, but we will talk about anything. So you will get both yeah. barrels. Okay, great. Which might well get us sacked. So if you can offer us financial compensation. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Great, cool, 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 cool. Okay, fine. Um, First people we've ever paid. Yep, yeah, yeah, that'd be fine. <laughs> Good, finally. So, um, 2011 now, Josh. I feel like life is broadening out a bit here. I became here. a professional comedian in 2010. Okay, okay. Then then that would explain why there's a few, you know, this guy's a writer. He's got the round buff willow waste paper basket. You just got your little... <laughs> your little... I'm feeling like there's a Wizard that, montage then? here. November 2011. So, that would obviously be for my... So, I was living then... Fucking hell. I was living in Turnpike Lane mm. in on a very rough kind of street, but it was a very nice house. Yeah. So it was a it was a flat that you would never be able to re- afford in London yeah. on our income normally. We'd we'd done the opposite of location, location, location. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the thing where you go, This is fantastic. There must be some drawback. Yeah. And then 9pm comes. Yeah. So Tom Crane, who you know who I was yeah. living with, he had a gun drawn on him at one point by God. someone in the car. This sounds like, this is bleak. The roads had dog shit on them, mm. but not just that. The dog shit looked ill. Like you could see the dogs <laughs> were unwell. Wow. Wow. Yeah. That is... That's a whole new level of, of sadness. Even, yeah. even the dogs were miserable. But it was a lovely flat. We had a wet room. Like, it was like, yeah. once you got inside, you were like, this is fucking brilliant. We had this huge living room. Yeah. So it had been a family home that they'd done up really nicely mm. inside. But they had a point where they went, we cannot But they'd moved to kids. Crouch End. Yeah. Yes, okay. Because the dogs get ill in Crouch End because maybe they've got a gluten thing going exactly. on. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But in Turnpike Lane, it's just because they're eating beans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so you've got a waste paper basket in the corner. I imagine you, you know, I just can't make this joke work, scrunching it up in the... Do you know what I mean? There's a Whitaker montage... Evolving in my head. Yeah, there's a lot of jokes I can make work then. Mm. I was taking, I took myself quite seriously, I think. Did you? Yeah. Did you, one thing I really like about you, like socially, is I feel like I can absolutely take the piss out of you. You don't seem Yeah, to no, I didn't take myself seriously in that sense, but I was like, I work really hard on this and okay. I, this is what I'm doing and you've got to go for it and all that kind of stuff that eventually kind of drives you into exhaustion. Pressure. But pressure, yeah. To, an incredible amount of self uh created pressure. But you were doing great at this point. When did you get signed by Off the Curb? That's the 2010, that... that's when I became a professional comedian. That was the moment, I see. June Edinburgh 2010 was when I quit my job at The Guardian. Um and then I did the Comedy Zone, which is like twenty minutes in Edinburgh each yeah. week. And then the really Good things that happened for my career were I supported Alan Carr on his warm-up tour mm. in spring 2011 okay. and Stephen Merchant on his main tour in autumn 2011. Yeah. And doing that support totally just made me ten times the comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you just... Uh, big rooms. Big ro- So, I can't remember who I said this to, so sorry if I repeat something that I've said on another podcast. Absolutely fine. But there's a book called how Music Works by David Byrne from Talking Heads. I love David Byrne. And um, Am I a Muso? That answers your question. You it's probably on there, right? <laughs> um, that'll come up in a bit. Yeah. Um, and he talks about how different music is created in different rooms. And so you could trace choral music reflects the rooms it was created in or punk is for those small... That that the that is the music that sounds best in that room. You can't play intricate music because yeah. the acoustics aren't good enough. So you have to play fast and you have to play loud, etc. Is this your way of saying you wrote your comedy in a wet room? That... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you if you play a certain type of gig, you're you end up 
writing material and performing like that is the right place for it. And so if you play in comedy clubs or you at the weekends, yeah. all your stuff's short, it's sharp, it's a bit base, so there's no room for subtlety, there's no chance to do longer routines. Yes. Completely then when agree. you go and support Alan Carr and Stephen Merchant in theatres, mm. your bits get longer, they mm. get more kind of you can do softer observations because people are listening. People You've are, got to relax into that yeah, because exa- it's scary because you're you're getting rid of the support of having the, the bulletproof gags. Yeah. And you're doing better stuff. You're doing better stuff that will work better on TV because yeah. on TV the edge of the room is lost so the material comes through more. So that's the stuff that made me a much better comedian or a comedian that was more able to do television mm. stuff. I support Stephen Merchant on tour. I just got very tired. <laughs> just a lot of travel. We did the we did the Scandi bit. I did think I you? did the bit you didn't want to do. It was oh, two yeah. years later. Yeah. Was, uh, I remember the that. I was watching Stephen Merchant have to fold himself onto a plane every day. <laughs> I mean, he's the size of a Learjet anyway. Yeah. And it, it was it was wonderful. He's so nice to go with him on tour, isn't he? Such a nice man. You did the Scandi so bit. That must have been amazing. Genuinely career highlight. Like I love yeah. I love him. I loved gigging with him. I became I did also become a much better comedian. But yeah. I saw Loads of, I saw Iceland and yeah. it was like we were on this weird honeymoon. It was brilliant. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah he's a legend. He's a yeah. legend. He's coming on this show soon. Oh, what a he man. Is under serious pressure to do that. Um, all right, good. So uh, let's have a look what else we've got, uh, Josh. And yeah, Reginald D. Hunter Live, loads of comics here. Um, top Trump specials, top gear stunts. That must be a gift. Yeah, gift stuff. Okay, fine, good. Uh, let's plow on into 2012 now. And um, we've got 45 litre plastic storage box. <laughs> Pack of five. Hundreds of litres. Well, yeah. Are we in, so November 2012, are you leaving Turnpike Lane at this stage? Yeah. I see nesting. I see nesting. Look, there's a lot of bins. A lot of bins. <laughs> Look, and you've bought a, a wood folding clothes era. It's the dawn of a new era. That's... It is the dawn of a new era. I moved in with my girlfriend. Oh. Stroke, now wife. Oh. Look, this is lovely. So we go. So these are the signs of someone moving in with someone, right? Yeah. This is what I love domesticity on the show. It's one of my favourite things when you yeah. get to another waste paper basket. Another one. What happened to the last I, one? I just, well, maybe I left it in Turnpike Lane because I moved out and they remained there. So mm. you don't want to take your bin with you, do you? It's quite a depressing moment to pack a bin. Yeah, yeah, don't exactly. Bin. Difficult you, to pack as well. Uh, black 50 litre swing bin. Premier Housewares um, coat stand. You've got a Henry Hoover. I remember that. You've I remember got a that folding clothes stand. area. You have got, and this for me is the peak of um, domesticity and nesting, the white toilet brush uh, holder and bowl. You've, you've bought a bog brush there. Yeah, of course. Well, you've got to, haven't you? We, we don't have one. Why not? Because they make my wife feel sick. Because they're. I can are, see they are vile. They're toothbrushes with shit on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they sit in the toilet. And if you are using the toilet, you look down, I can see bits of poo there. Yeah. So. Yeah. We have a pretty strict policy. If you, you know, if you skid yeah. it up, you've got to get in there and get it sorted out. What? What head first? Well, I mean, you could use this. That's why I tend to use this. <laughs> Apologising, my wife flushed my head down the toilet. No, you get a scrunch of bog rod. Yeah, you get yeah. in there and you get yeah. it done. Get okay. it done when it's fresh and it's fine. I think that's fine. But what about visitors? Um, my brother got banned from using two toilets in our house, both toilets. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to watch out for that. But that makes it even worse then if you've got a bog brush in your house. Yeah. And visitors use it because then you're like... Oh, yeah, it's not even your shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's Beth's cousin's shit over there. How much should I spend on the bog brush? £7.72. Was this an exciting figure. time then? Was this a moment where you were like... Well, that, uh, that moment doesn't sound particularly exciting. Well, no, I mean, the stuff isn't exciting, but the moment in your life... Look at this. Hang on. Intex queen-size airbed with raised pillow and built-in pump? Yeah, because I think that was a period before we got the bed delivered. Oh, okay. Yes. Because it's certainly not about camping. No. Unless it's before Glastonbury or something. No, September 2012. So this is... Um, yeah, it's exactly that thing. When you order the bed or the sofa... And you're yeah. like, yes, we've got it. And oh. they, then they get you to pay. Do you know what? I've tried I'm I'm currently trying for the second time because I'm working up a tour a routine about this, but it feels like it's un um it feels like people don't connect with it, the six week wait for a sofa. They wait until you've paid. And yeah. then they say, That's it, you've got six it'll be it'll be with you in October. Because they haven't made it. Because <laughs> it's not it's yeah, it doesn't exist. But you yeah. sell sofas. Yeah. 
You've got to have <laughs> sofas. You've got well, to back yourself that people will buy your products. Yeah, yeah. But it's that thing of of they're going they're gonna go off and make it especially for you because of all the little different choices you make with it. No, but they could do that really quickly. So what you want really is a shop sold one. What you're saying is you want one that's just been a few people have sat on. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm it's saying ready. if you start a company called Sofa.com, <laughs> you have to have a warehouse full of sofas. Yeah. Because you might as well go, people want different colour cars, so we're not going to make any cars mm. until someone's asked for a car. It's a bit like ordering a taxi and someone says, great, I'm going to go and buy a car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then I'll pick you up when I bought the car. Because I didn't realise that you might mm. use Uber yeah. to order a taxi. It is annoying especially when you then have to tolerate your existing sofa or your existing bed for for another oh. however many weeks that's six well, weeks of hating but, no, but it's not even the existing sofa it's when you've not got a sofa yeah yeah, yeah. and you're sat on a kitchen chair watching tv for <laughs> the length of the summer holidays get do you know what i've got one word for you the greatest invention ever bean bags get a bean bag. do you think i find that quite hard no i love a bean bag do you? They fit around you. They're the they're the the memory foam of the nineties. So have you got them in your house? No, of course not. We've got sofas because they arrived. Yeah. Bean bags are a stopgap. Right. They're a bridging How road for you your ass. How do you dispose of a bean bag? One um, bean at a time. For... <laughs> yeah, like the Great Escape. Yeah. You just go out and shake it down your trousers. <laughs> like... No, you find a house share of students nearby. Oh right, yeah, yeah. They'll take anything. Do you leave stuff on the street? This is quite a good thing off Amazon. This is weird. There's someone near us who's... Is, is it possible to be a reverse hoarder? Who is literally... She puts stuff out on her street and we walk past it every day on the way to school and it's like her old shoes. She put a used COVID test out the other day. So I what? Think she's not entirely... With the Woolwich. There you are. And uh, she writes a little note. Please take. So we'll, we're in an area of where there's a feeling that people can do that. Yes. So we'll do it. And it's fucking brilliant. <laughs> you feel in incredible yeah it's the opposite it's the same feeling yeah. but at the other end of the joy you feel from consumption yeah. is that feeling of if i just put this fucking you know yeah. tommy tp outside yeah someone's just gonna take it it's exc excretion it's not yeah. consumption it's excretion yeah it's bursting the boil and sometimes you know i have been known to do it and then sit on the bench nearby on watch wave it off yeah hope yourselves guys What's quite fun is what's going to go first. You, I, mm. I would say never. I'm, I'm still. It shows how little knowledge I have of the the British public. Mm. I can never call it. And I think because of doing stand up, I know audiences. I know what people are like. Yeah, but you don't always until, get it wrong until you've put stuff on your wall. What's the thing that has uh, that's gone quickest? Where you thought I could have eBayed that for a few quid? Yeah, that's always worrying. Do you know what always goes quickest? This is going to be incredibly unrelatable yeah go on but i suppose i can only live the life i'm living yeah exactly but you're which is self. um is that we'll get um my agent and often the production company if i do a tv show like last leg yes will send us a christmas hamper yeah they don't pay you then they just send you hampers that's, <laughs> uh, that's nice okay fine a bit weird but all right um and so we'll get the stuff out but then you're like this fucking hamper yeah um and they go for like 20 quid on eBay. But mm. you're like, am I really going to go through mm. the, the... This is going to be a saga yeah. of having a hamper, trying to sell it on eBay. Writing a description Writing a description, hamper. taking One photos hamper. Not of used, it. taking yeah. those photos. Um, and then taking it to the post office at Christmas. Oh, mate. And so you're like, what if I just put this on the street and they go like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you feel great. That's worth twenty. And quid. you feel that's worth twenty quid. I'll pay twenty quid to feel yeah. to feel good and big. Yeah. And you just watch the like. And you're like, someone's really going to enjoy that hamper. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. that is a good, useful thing. But do you but, sit with it and watch it go, or do you just leave it out there and go? Because leave it out there. And oh, go. I want the pleasure of watching it go. No, I like the magic of it's gone. I'd want to know who's got it so I can see them in weeks to come. <laughs> How's the hamper? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to you, you've got to validate yourself by these yeah. things. Um, Oh, look, 2013 now. God, we're running out of time, Josh Whittaker. Sorry, I okay. talk too much. No, no, no. It's it's uh, it's kind of expected. Um, okay, um, here's a big part of your life. Um, let's see if this will just get us all the way to the end of the episode. 2013, 
3,862 days, the official history of Blur. The life of Blur. I'd already Martin read Power. that by... That's by Stuart McConey. Mm, yeah, that 3,862 3, days. So I, I read that when it came out, which was in 1999 yeah, or 2000. Yeah. You're a big Blur fan? Yeah, huge. Mm -hmm. um, those two books are... I bought them at the same time yeah. because I was doing Blur on Master on Celebrity Mastermind. Oh, nice! And how did you get on? I because this is a sign of that single-minded thing we were talking about. I read both books. I underlined everything that I thought was a fact, and then I created fact sheets wow. and learnt every fact possible, so that that's more effort than an Edinburgh show. Certainly one of mine, <laughs> um, and um, not for the audience, but. Um, and uh, yeah, I I got 30, eleven out of thirteen for Blur. Yeah, very good. And then I won on the general knowledge, which obviously I. So you won the whole mastermind at, thing. What well, was a well, celebrity mastermind? Doesn't matter. Some yeah. celebrities are clever. Yeah, that's impressive. That well, it's is... a one in four chance. Who was it? Who was on your episode? And I'll be the judge of whether or not that's impressive. A woman from Emmerdale who did black books, which I don't think is a big enough topic, but there we go. <laughs> and then afterwards told me that my general knowledge questions were easier than hers. But I wouldn't know her name, but I Com suppose you could Google it. Competitive. Fair people enough. People are competitive. We've had this before on this show. People have talked about Mastermind and being... People yeah. are quite competitive about it. Yeah. Because to be in this business, I guess, you get very single-minded and competitive. And, yeah. You know. Do you know the worst bit is almost not doing your bit, because obviously you're there. You know how a football manager will say um, it's easier being a player because you don't have to watch? Yes. Watching the other people yeah. go up and, yeah. let's be honest, every right answer is a dagger to your heart. Yeah. Fucking hell. I can't, you know, the lack of control as they're <laughs> getting answers right. <laughs> they should mic you up for that. I'd want to yeah. hear. Shit! Oh, God. But that would be just delicious, and that's. But of course, you have to do the award ceremony failure face. Well, you? you're in the dark, luckily at that point, aren't yeah, you? Because yeah. they're spotlit. But I think that'd be funnier just to hear the noise coming from the dark. <laughs> Fucking hell! Sorry, that's Josh Ridder come there. Um, all right, look, 2014. Uh, you've bought a Flymo Turbo Light Electric Hover Lawnmower. Yeah, bought a house in uh, East London. I don't live in it anymore. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I'd say our lawn. I mean, it's difficult for the podcast listener in the video mm. i'd say our lawn wasn't as big as this definitely wasn't as big as this room okay well under an acre listeners. Well, <laughs> um it was a tiny lawn yeah. and i'd say i don't know why i bought such a big but then is there such a thing as a small mower you can get tiny mowers yeah this is quite small one the little fly mow but that must be quite sort of dispiriting because it's quite a sort of um... that lawn was the bane of my life yeah because it was great when we bought the house yeah a lawn is f so much effort it's another a child it's it's yeah my and dad you... spent more time with our lawns than yeah, he did with me yeah no all you can see is the problems with it it's like yeah. molehills yeah patches yeah Foxes exactly well, yeah exactly kind of like those those weeds yeah yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah. just fucking horrible and to, a lawn. it's i mean this is such a small space to mow it would take you Ten, five. I mean, yeah, yeah, we're yeah, talking. Exactly. Yeah, done it. Yeah, it is like it's like buying a razor when you're about twelve, thirteen. Yeah, you quite need it. Yeah, no, exactly. But it, there's something quite. You know, are you a domestic kind of guy? These rituals, these things of being I homely. I like being and, at home. Yeah, I wouldn't too. leave the house if I had the option. I I always think of Bob Mortimer talking about this. Saying, I just I just want my my pork pie and my TV. Yeah, I'm totally. Yeah, uh, that happened during COVID though for me. Oh yeah. The, I had worked every evening for 12 years. Yeah. Oh, you know, exaggeration, but, I mean, you know, five nights a week for 12 years. And then exactly. I, I've i learned what it was like to have your evenings back. Yeah, it's un and unbelievable. And I was like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? It's unbelievable. I mean, I, I haven't been regularly on the circuit for the best part of probably seven, eight years now. And every weekday evening, I still go, oh, I haven't got to do a gig tonight. Yeah. Every weekday evening. Tonight, I haven't got to do a gig and I'm so happy. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it's it? It's weird, and yeah, I love it. And when I'm doing it, I, I love, love it. it. And I'm working up a tour, and I enjoy the tour. Yes. But it's it's about finding that balance now. Mm, yeah, yeah. Just make... I won't be Ken Dodd. Oh, my God. I'm not. I. He's dead, and he's still gigging. <laughs> That's how hard Ken Dodd gigs. Like, that guy, 
He is, I mean... Like, I, when I'm done, I, I'm i done. I'm fine with that. I'm going to do a Lee Evans. Just Are you? Yeah, just go, I'm all right. I'm done with it, really. He was still brilliant. He walked yeah. away. The absolute, I mean, he'll probably come back and do more, but he just stopped. Well, we've been saying that for 10 years. Is that how long it's been? Yeah, because it was 2013, because it's when... Um, he, um, Oh, when Addison, Addison died. died, of course, because yeah. it was part of that, wasn't it? He was devastated. Yeah. Um, all right, look, um, oh, we're running out of time, Josh. We're running out of time. Let me just do a quick. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like a fast forward through your Amazon history. Yeah, I reckon we can take it as read. I've talked about parenting enough in my life. You should do a podcast on that. <laughs> uh, ditto football shoot annual 1991. Great. Bought that in 2016. Yeah. I mean, this is just lovely nostalgia. Um, 2017 now. Um, yeah, there's football. There's a lovely luxury fountain pen. That is around December, so possibly gets... That's a present. Yeah. That was... When was that? 2017? 2017, yeah. I think that's... Yeah, for Joe Norris, the oh. owner of Off the Curb Productions, who nice. are my agents, but lovely. I can't remember. To sign some contracts with. Yeah. Um, 17... To sign my life away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 17th of February, 2017, the funky Hawaiian shirts. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was for a 30th birthday party with Hawaiian theme. Great, love that, love that. Yeah. Thank you, really nice, really nice. Still got it? S- no, I can't tell you when it turned up how acrylic it was. Oh, instant sweats. Yeah, yeah, like a football shirt. Yeah, like wearing a plastic bag, yeah, that's yeah. the absolute worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, what do you expect when you spend three quid? Um, oh, look, here we go, 2017, 13th of October 2017, your baby week by week. This is, of course, when you conceived... The podcast that's made you millions. So that was that what was, was when what, that what, what date's that? October twenty seventeen. And so what date did it? The thirteenth of October. Two days before my daughter was born. Wow. Last minute book. Wow. So were you sitting there while your wife was a neighbour? Just uh, it says here on chapter three. <laughs> yeah. She said we'd be further on than this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, those books you buy them, right? Because you you are in a controlled panic about what's about to happen. Yeah, because it's the first time in your life when you can't use that kind of um, drive and work ethic I talked about, I suppose. Yes, yes, you have to just, you have to take it so as you have to surrender. It's the first time in your life that you listen to your parents as well. No. Oh, really? <laughs> Stuff to come. But it, there is a kind of like, what do I do now? Yeah. Um, all right, so this is a big moment for you, right? Yeah. Tommy Tippy, um, we've got nappy disposable uh, starter pack Because I think the first six months of having a kid, yeah, being an Amazon Prime member was just, it was like a desperate call into the wild at yeah. 2.30 in the morning yeah. when the baby wouldn't sleep and you found something and you were like, yeah. this could be here yeah. at 10 p.m., tomorrow yeah. so this doesn't happen tomorrow night yeah. it would, wouldn't work but it's almost hope totally it's some of the shit we bought it's a u-shaped pillow i bought yeah, yeah. you two just in case yeah, yeah. you soil one like and the and you, and you, and you like you say you buy it at 2 a.m and it arrives next day and you're like i have no no recollection yeah, yeah. of buying this it's complete insanity um uh elsewhere uh we have got in 2018 now right we're powering through um uh, we have got oh what? lovely stuff a non-contact digital laser IR infrared thermometer going early with that only 2018 this because a lot of people bought those during lockdown of course but this is presumably for baby yeah very useful very it's, useful nice to point a laser at um, a child yeah Pfft. um 16 bottle pine wooden wine rack fully assembled excellent fully assembled yeah good decision the kids bought, have arrived we bought one that was not assembled and it was fucking impossible to assemble it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's no rage quite like the rage of building something no. to look after booze. Um, 23rd of December 2019, £285 on a combi drill and impact driver 18-volt kit. Look at that. That's some serious drill action there. On the 23rd of September. Very December. close to Christmas. 2019. We're, but we're inching into lockdown at this stage. Yeah, I don't. I've got no memory of that. Okay, fine, fine. fine. And I'm going to say it. Yeah, I haven't got my money's worth. <laughs> For two hundred and eighty-five quid, you'd be. I'd be. One but I've still got day. it. You need a drill. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do occasionally use it, but I have no memory of why I bought it in the first place. I hate getting the drill out. I hate the sound of it. You drill it's it. It's scary, isn't it? It scares me every time. It's this high-pitched. The yeah, power it's of awful. it, and I feel like something's going to explode in my face. <coughs> yeah, it's when I'm awful. doing it. You know that thing. Awful. Not for me. Um, 
Serenity Deluxe Pillow with a luxury latex filling. Nice latex Oh, well, pillow. I can tell you about that. Oh, go on. Um, I have to have a special pillow. Because I've got a bad neck. And oh. I got recommended this pillow that's really good for sleeping. Oh, does it help? Yeah, it really helps. Does it? Yeah, because it keeps your head straight. So it's not too thin and it's not too fat. Because I'm a scruncher when I sleep. Yeah. I do that. Yeah, well, and if I... you haven't got a bad neck, don't worry about no, it. No, I, do get, I get quite a bad well, neck. Well, you should get one of those pillows. Oh, really? And they're 100 quid, but obviously that you can't put a price on being able to turn your head. Um, oh, that's really, yeah, it's invaluable. Um, but I have to buy one about every 18 months because they slowly... Oh, okay. They lose their firmness. and Yeah, mm-hmm, but... Mm-hmm. It droops. It, that sounds like a lot of money on pillows, but that's a lot of money. That's actually well-spent money. Oh. That is the sort of luxury, though, isn't it? Like, you would never have bought that product before Amazon. You would never have known about it or found out about yeah, it or yeah. found it in John Lewis, maybe. It's yeah. just that thing of going into a sort of shopping hole online and then before you know it, you've got this thing. And then that's it. It's vital. That's it. Yeah. You're in. Um, look, uh, here's what we're going to do, right? Because we have run out Does of time. Does this happen often? What? Have I talked too much? No, no, not too much. Does all. it happen often? No, no, it's absolutely par. What always happens is I start, I, we really but dive into early I think early stuff. ones are more interesting. Yeah, yeah. We do work mostly early. Yeah. But in the last couple of years, you always go, yeah, you've bought things. Yeah, but yeah. early stuff is because you get the best stories. No, no, this is some, um, but I haven't had someone doubt it as much as you. This is noble. <laughs> uh, is this, is this normal? Um, okay, so look, uh, Josh Whittacombe, um 13th of April, 2024. The Art of Memoir. Are you about to write a book? No, but I'm really interested in um, uh, creative people talking about how to do different creative things. Mm. So um, I like reading. I re- read a book by Jeff Tweedy from Wilco about how to write a song. I've got no interest in writing songs. Mm. I, I find I really enjoy when people say I read this book and it really helped me do something yeah. even if they haven't done what I want to do yeah. I think oh that would be interesting yeah 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 are Does you one of those people sense? yeah yeah no 100% are you one of those people who someone will say the slightest thing like that and I've got my phone out straight away yeah give me the name of it it's on a list totally probably never going to read it and then I'll see it on my list like two years later so what? but I think that's a real thing that I got from my generation is that before you had Spotify, uh, and before you had, which I'm sure you could do a rival podcast. Mm, it's um, coming. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, before you had Spotify, and before you had um, the internet to read about stuff, mm. I got all of my tastes of music, particularly music, yeah. through you'd read The Enemy, and you'd read an interview with an artist, and they'd mention a different artist. Yeah, oh, nice. And then you'd go, oh, he, that's how I, yeah. they've mentioned the Smiths. Yeah. Who are the Smiths? I'll buy an album by the Smiths. I don't know anything yeah. about them. And then you'd get into that, and then you'd read that, and they'd go, I liked. Yeah, yeah. It's like and, a treasure hunt. Yeah, and Brilliant. so I'm still doing that yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. interviews. Like um, I listened to a John Ronson being interviewed by Adam Buxton the other day. Yeah. And he talked about three authors that um, he loves that influenced him. Mm. And I'm going to go and buy those books. Yeah. Not because I want to be John Ronson and they probably, but I just think that those oh, that's something I do. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. what that is. It's nice. I like that. And that, that curiosity as well. I think that our generation, when we grew up, all information and books and culture was... Um, harder to get hold of, so we had a thirst for it. So we pointed yeah, it out with totally. like, get, get, and then we're still accumulating in a world where there's no too much. Whereas newer generations, I would moot, are quite like, oh, it's just, oh, it's just, you well, know. you know, I'm like, it's there. Uh, oh right, people are going on about that Beyonce album. Yeah, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How much you listen to? Eight seconds. Yeah, Eight seconds. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's unbelievable. Whereas if you've gone, oh right, they're going on about that Beyonce album. I'll get the bus up to Exeter. Yeah, and I'll buy it. And I'll wait till I get home because I can't listen. Yeah, it's on so CD. I've, I've read to, it all. I, I'll read the inlay. I'll sit down. I'll make myself like it. I need to give this. I fucking spent a ten on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This needs to work out for me. It's like a, exactly. You know, like when a team signs a player for a lot of money. Yes, yes. And they're like, we've got to fucking make this work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas now it's just like free transfers. No, absolutely. I didn't work. 
it's Andy Carroll system. I'm yeah, just, you've got, we got it. Andy Carroll will just stay, keep the faith, guys. Keep yeah, the yeah, faith. exactly. It's going to get good. So what Josh and I are saying is, if you could pay uh, ten pounds per episode of My Mate Bought a Toaster, exactly. you'll like it more. Exactly. Uh, look, we're going to finish on this. The last thing, uh, Josh, that you've bought a, um, it's a helicopter. It's a uh, kids' rescue helicopter. Crucially, it says the word toy. Otherwise, it sounds like you've got yeah, a helicopter yeah. to go and rescue kids. Um, twenty pounds on a lovely a toy. Interactive features including a moving rotor. So, Basic, really. Uh, winch, flashing lights, sound stretcher, and opening doors. Fucking winch. Um, winch. I. So the winch is a piece of string mm. with a hook attached. Yeah. Um, and you press a button and it goes up and down. Excellent. Yeah. The piece of string, piece yeah. of cotton, yeah. um, into an interior bit, and then you attach a uh, bed to it. Yeah. And the hook came off it, so it was just a piece of hanging okay. cotton. And yeah. I was like, that's fine, I'll just reattach the hook. Mm. And for some reason, I pressed the button. Oh, it's gone into the And it drum. just winched the whole cotton into the helicopter. So you've lost the end of the cotton thread? I've got no I've got no cotton thread anymore. Oh, it's just within mate. the interior of the helicopter. That's that's got is that why you've bought a second one? I haven't bought a second There's one. There's two. two different helicopters. Oh, you've bought two different helicopters. I tell you why. Um so and we have to do this on Parenting How. Mm. Trigger warning. I'm about to discuss the dummy fairy. Oh, so yeah. if you're listening with children. Yes. Who, yeah. Yeah. Any kids listening. I don't think kids will still be here by now, Josh. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, my son was giving up his dummy. Mm. Um, we've done this thing, which I'm sure a lot of parents have done, which we're told to do, which is basically bribery. The Dummy fairy will buy you what the fuck you want if you give up your dummy. <laughs> it's basically that. It will buy you an introduction to stand-up comedy yeah. with Logan Murray, yeah. of course. Two helicopters. Deal. Yeah. That's that so that is it. That and that is the that is the peak for the kids. Two helicopters is amazing. Yeah, fine. And the, has the dummy. What gone? to give up yeah. That's a genius idea. <laughs> it's just out and out bribery. Yeah, if you can get through the night without your dummy, the dummy fairy will deliver these helicopters. You're in trouble. When the kid comes back and says, well, the winch doesn't work anymore. Can I have the dummy back now? That's, <laughs> that's when you have to explain. Sorry, we don't do returns. Yeah, There's no returns. Um, listen, uh, Josh, thank you so much for doing it. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's been really good fun. And we've gone from um, Jonathan Creek living in a windmill yeah. to uh, to a kid being bribed with helicopters. It's all about rotary. It's all about rotary. Good, things that go round. Yeah. Yes. Oh, God, I like it when there's a pattern. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It just feels C- like we've bracketed off. Circular often. in so many ways. Oh, I love it. Thank God for that. It just feels so much neater. So Nish Kumar was on the show a couple of weeks ago and was absolutely brilliant because he doesn't have an Amazon account. Yeah. So we did his Waterstones account instead. Doesn't. It was very funny. Of he fucking doesn't. Um, tell us about your show with Nish. It's brilliant. Hold the front page, which is... you. We don't... I, I always get the feeling, right? If you're still listening now, you like me. So hopefully you'll definitely really enjoy this because it's good. It's me and Nish and it's on Sky Max and it's Now TV. Yeah. And we go and work at a different local paper every week and attempt to get the front page and we're shit at it. Did you go to South... You did South Wales August, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. All you need for a front page is tragedy. They love a tragedy on the front page of the South West Argus. Yeah, but it is a comedy entertainment show. Well, you know, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, Josh, uh, thank you so much for coming on My Mate Bought a thank Toaster. You uh, what have you learned about yourself? Final question. Um, I Tricky found one. the really one, really early ones interesting. Yeah. Um, maybe that I was more interesting before I settled down and had <laughs> kids. As a human being. Great, good. So we can send you on your way with sort of existential yeah. doubt and yeah. yeah, yeah, that's ideal. Some more neuroses for you. Uh, Josh, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. He's put his hand up for a handshake. Yeah. No one's ever done that before. Well, it's not, well, when you sat next that, to someone and, and throughout, no. it's quite, you know. Yeah. It's my mate. Oh, it's my mate. 